the next thing is to just get some idea of where the engine will go. So I'm going to use my engine crane here. Lift the engine off its cradle. I'm basically dangle it in this hole here and see how it mates up to the axle. And I'm going to put the whole car on um, dollies. You know, those little things that go under the wheel with uh, caster wheels on them. So I can push the whole car around the garage, kind of underneath the crane, the dangling engine, and then lower it down. That's the plan anyway, if there's room. So I'm going to have to tidy up a bit first and make as much room as I can. Well, the cunning plan is we lift the engine right up, and we swing this round, and these feet should swing under there with a bit of luck. And then we plonk the engine down. Well, I've got it around this far. Because the problem I've got now is uh, if I drop it down all the way, it's going to interfere with the legs of the hoist. So I need to detach the hoist, bring the hoist round, I don't know if there's room, bring it in from the back. So the legs are then like that, each side of the engine, and then I can raise and lower it as much as I want. I'll move it back and forth more easily to get this onto that. Right, I need to do a quick check here. I've got this on the furthest extension, half a ton. So we know this engine weighs about 600 and something pounds. How many pounds in an imperial ton? 2,240. Right, so in theory it should be perfectly capable of lifting it. But uh, as soon as I can, I'm going to... Uh, Gonna move the engine back just to touch and then I can use the one ton point which I'd be happier with to be honest. That's the most compact way to have the engine crane. So I can move this up and down, I can build up a platform under it so it's exactly the right height. Um, loosely bolt this in here and then um, mark out engine mounts uh, but clearly <clears throat> this will actually move back about that much so I think I've got enough room for a firewall and a radiator with the radiator you've got to have room for a fan and you've got to have room to get air in otherwise there's not a lot of point um, I know a lot of people use a water tank but it's quite convenient to have a radiator. I mean, you can drive up and down the beach without having to keep stopping because you're too hot and having to get towed. So uh, if I can get a radiator in a well, if it doesn't work, well, go back to a water tank. Um, so uh, if in doubt, do the thing that gives you the most options. That's uh, some of the best advice I was ever been given in life. And it generally works out um, in all sorts of ways. So. This gives me lots of options. If I hand stretch the chassis by six inches, you can see, um, bearing in mind that'll be forward a bit, this gap would be pretty tight and I would be pretty limited to having basically a, um, a deep, flat water tank here. There'd be no option of a radiator, really. Um, this side's going to be all gear linkage, probably. Some kind of weird contraption, like you see on lots of cars. Um, fuel tank could go here or it could sort of go here um, probably here to be honest It'd be the best place wouldn't it and then we need room for a battery but I, th I think there's room for that exhausts uh, yeah I'll have to decide um, I don't want it to have a manifold and bring it out through the rear that looks quite cool on some cars or just have them sticking out the sides or at the top. Um, I think of something. That'll probably be one of the last things I actually do. I thought this was going a bit too well. Got my adapter. Got my engine at about the right height on the hoist. Got this ready. I'm trying to slide the splines together so I can loosely do up the adapter to work out where the engine mounts need to be. But <sighs> look what we have. This has got 10 splines, and this has 6. 
if you can see that there. So I, it was my kind of understanding when I was doing my homework that this the spline pattern here is the same as this one and they would slide together. Um, but I'm obviously going to have to do some more research. I don't know if there's different variations of this or different variations of this because there were certainly different variations of torque tube and prop shaft. So I mean it might be this but um, either way I've got to hit the forums and ask some questions and see if anyone can help me out with some knowledge. Um, this is the beauty of the internet. So I'm going to put the engine back on the floor and uh, hit the computer. So earlier in this project I said I've said a couple of times I seem to spend as much time researching things as actually making anything and this is the same so I've got my rear banjo axle system as it's called apart here and there's a male input shaft and I've got 10 splines on mine and the universal joint from the gearbox has six and it's supposed to slide over it but clearly it doesn't so clearly there's either two types of universal joint or more or there's different types of spline on the input so inside the banjo basically you've got something like this a crown wheel which is driven by a little kind of small cog if you like here that's the bit that's got the splines on the input and that goes around and turns the axles there's some other little gears but I mean that's the basic idea so I've got these little box by a guy called Vern Tardell I don't know if that's how you pronounce it so it's time to start doing homework so if I just flick through this book and I'm, um, let's just see what the picture shows so if I look at this picture you see that looks like uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's probably that looks like it's got ten splines there, and then and and there, and then if I keep flicking through the book, uh, now look at that one. Now that's got six. It's the same component. That's got six there. You see. So, something's going on. So clearly there's different types. Now I also have another problem that I need to solve. Um, do you remember a long time in an earlier video, I showed that my rear differential ratio, the ratio here between the size of the small cog and the big cog driving the outsoles, was for a van. So even with the engine going at 3000 RPM, um, I did some maths. Um, there we are, it's 4.11 to 1 ratio. I did some maths and showed that at 3000 RPM with a 28 inch tyre, I would end up doing 60 miles an hour with a 31 inch tyre, which is about the biggest you can reasonably get. You can get bigger ones, but they're incredibly expensive and extremely obscure. Uh, a 31 inch tyre, I'd end up doing 67.3 miles an hour. So basically I need a different ratio. Well, one option is to change the center of the banjo keep the axle tubes and fit a thing called a quick change. So there's the input shaft there and you've got this thing here and if you remove this plate which is at the back of the car pointing backwards you've got two straight cut gears and you just slide them in over bearings um, and you can get different gear sets so basically you can quickly change hence the name quick change the uh, the drive ratio of like your final drive inside your banjo um, to suit the conditions so you for example to drive to a race you could have like a one set and then you could have a different set depending on what you're planning to do when you get there if you're aiming for high top speed or whether you're aiming if you're doing sort of drag racing where you might end up with a lower ratio for a better uh, low speed performance as you accelerate so um that's fine. The problem with that is for me is they are seriously expensive. And at the moment I'm, uh, you know, I could use, well use that money in some other way. Here's the back end with the plate removed. You can see you can put different gear sets in and they make a kind of whining noise. And this shows your ratio. So 
can I have I got to really put one of these in or can I just change the internals of my banjo um, to get a better ratio and at the same time get a six spline input so that would solve both problems well now the next thing is to think about if I change change the um, gear ratio in my banjo axle for a high top speed that means I've got rubbish acceleration at the beginning and my acceleration off the line will be a bit bit slow and it'll be like moving off in a normal car in second gear instead of first um, and you've only got a three speed gearbox as well so um, ideally you'd have those gears wider spaced um, but on the other hand I'm not going up hills number one number two I've got a long run up I'm not going for fast acceleration at all. I'm going for reasonable top speed. I'm not aiming super high either. So if you watch, uh, this guy built his own belly tank race. So he actually lives 20 minute drive from me, which is pretty weird. And this is on Pendine Sands. And this is his first run. And I think he moved off in first gear. And he's got a quick change with quite a high sort of ratio in there. So, uh, so I mean a low ratio give you a top speed so he's in a similar situation so if you watch he's just to the, the launch and the first bit where he's changing gear it's a bit of a gear change there I think right and now he starts getting up some speed now if you watch his second run he said in a post somewhere online that he, he did this run he went off in second gear to see if it was better so if we have a look, look, look quick look at that one just the first part so it moved off all right and he's already actually up to a much higher speed than he was before he was floundering a bit the first run and now he's really going so seems to me that uh, I should be all right with a 3.25 gear ratio uh, in the back instead of 4.11. This is the lowest kind of standard, reasonably easy to get one uh, that I can buy. Um, so I'm going to go for that because I've watched these videos and I'm reasonably confident, you know, I, I'm, my gearing isn't going to be so crazy that I can't even move off the line without being pushed. Now you might say, well, that's quite a lot of money, including shipping to the UK, and it is, but it's it's far less than a quick change system. Um, and bearing in mind, I'm not trying to do 150 miles an hour or anything. I'm just trying to do around 90, 100 maximum uh, at around 3,000, 2,500 RPM, something like that, with 31 inch tyres. Um, that would be about right, actually. So time for a bit of maths. So if my diameter of a circle, my 31 inch tire, is 31 inches, so we divide it by two, we get the radius, 15.5 inches. So what is, how far, for one revolution of my tire, how far along the ground will I go? That's the circumference. So how do you calculate the circumference? Well, you remember school, or you just go onto the web and type in circumference of a circle, enter the radius value. What do we say? 15 point. 97.39 inches so we know that whoop, that is 97.39 inches per turn right so the next thing at 3000 rpm in top gear and in top gear it's straight through so if the engine is doing 3000 rpm the uh, output of the gearbox is doing 3000 rpm so at 3000 rpm we're doing uh, 3000 times 97.39 inches uh, covered in distance per minute but we're not because we've got um, a final we've got another gear drive in here which we said was is going to be 3.25 to 1. So it's going to reduce that 
we have to divide that by 3.25. Uh, so we are going to have 3000 RPM coming in to my, uh, my banjo axle. And RPM there. And we'll get these down, but the wheels are going to go around slower. They're going to go around at 3000 RPM divided by 3.25 RPM. So what's that come to? Now I know it's a bit sad, but <laughs> I like these old calculators with the green displays from the 70s and 80s. If I ever see one in a junk sale or something, I buy them because they're usually not working. And the, usually the reason they're not working is there's no battery in them. So it's worth just paying about three to five pounds or dollars to buy one because they usually work actually. Right, so 3,000 divided by 3.25. Right, so at 3,000 RPM, RPM engine, my back wheel will be going round at 923 RPM. And we know the circumference of the wheel, this is a 31 inch wheel tyre, is 97.39 inches travelled per revolution. So I'm going to be going at 923 times 97.39 inches, inches travelled per minute. So what does that come to times 97.39? Right, there, 89898 inches per minute. Now we want it in miles per hour, don't we? Right, so we need to know, so if we times it by 60, we'll get inches per hour, and then we've got to convert that to miles. So times it by 60, 60 minutes in an hour, oof. Oh, big number, what well, it would be, wouldn't it? So, what have we got? Five, three, nine, three, nine, oh, seven point six inches per hour. So, how many inches in a mile? Inches in a mile equals, I've no idea. Let's have a look, let's go Googling. Right, I've looked up how many inches there are in a mile, and it's 63,360. There we are, miles to inches converter. 63,360. And we know we're doing 5 million and whatever inches per hour. So to get miles per hour, we've got to divide that by that. So, oh, excitement now. So, 5, 3, 9, Three nine oh seven point six ninety by six sixty. What do you reckon we're going to get? What's going to be our top speed at three thousand RPM? Oof, eighty five, eighty five miles at three thousand RPM. So just for fun, let's just see what it is at three thousand five hundred. At 3,500 RPM, we'll do 100 miles an hour, pretty much. So, for my car, bearing in mind I'm not trying to break any speed records, and I don't want to kill myself either, 100 miles an hour kind of real top speed is probably about right. That's fine, I'm happy with that. So, so, so long as this quick... Um, Crown Opinion Kit with the six blinds will fit the case of a 37 banjo axle then I'm probably going to end up buying one of these. I've got a book on essentially how to rebuild one of these. So I'm going to have to go through that. Speedway Motors also give you 
an instruction manual on how to fit it. Um, and there's also some YouTube videos like this guy, Wired Customs. He's got a video on how to reassemble one of these banjo axles. There you are, early four banjo rebuild. Um, nearly 7,000 views, so there's obviously enough people out there that want to play with these things still. So that's good. So that's going to be a complete separate project video on its own. But um, this one is just how I'm going to get around these problems. This video is also good, called Banjo for Beginners, but you can see they have a chart here called The Matrix, and it shows you all the main changes, including springs and things, by year. So here's your wide five wheels, 1939, come in, um, juice brakes, 39, he also, third pinion bearing, comes in here, he shows how it works. Yeah, because there's actually two bearings here, but they're like uh, angle bearings pushed against each other, plus a little one that goes on this end in the case. Uh, so that's a very good beginner video to the internals of a banjo axle.